Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to be trying to fix a uh, relatively unique problem. Keep watching, to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to try and fix a, uh, a relatively unique problem. Now, the problem I've got specifically with my computer is essentially the motherboard. So, this is an MSI B550 gaming Wi Fi, gaming edge Wi Fi is the exact model. I'll put some links for it in the video description so you can check out in more detail. Effectively, it doesn't have enough USB ports, which can be a pain at the best of times, but if you're somebody who creates content or has multiple USB devices, it can be a real pain in the backside. So my exact problem is when I'm doing live streams, generally I tend to use two cameras, the uh, overhead camera and the one that you're seeing in a moment. So in order to do that, generally I'd have two USB devices, one of which is my HD60S, which uh, plugs into USB Type-C, converts to a Type-A, goes into the computer, and also using the Elgato CamLink 4K, which, yeah, that is a USB Type-A. Now, the problem you generally have is with these kind of high bandwidth devices, if you have them both on the same controller, it just takes up too much bandwidth and it causes all sorts of issues. And very frequently, whenever I'm getting set up for the Saturday Night Live streams, which you're more than welcome to check out, uh, this thing just refuses to play ball and I end up unplugging, plug in, trying to refind it in OBS and eventually sometimes it'll work, sometimes it just won't at all and it just means I have to unplug one of the other devices, which is no good. So what I'm going to do today is to install another USB card into the PC, which is going to give us two more USB 5 gigabit per second ports. This card is actually really cool because it's very low cost, so just over £10 here in the UK. Uh, links will be in the video description below. But best of all, it doesn't require any additional power. So you can plug it into a PCI Express times one slot, which is awesome because those are the kind of slots that we generally don't tend to use. And there's enough power from that particular slot to power the card itself, so no additional cabling required at all. So let's take a look at the card now. As with most things on our unboxing channel, we'll start off with the packaging. So this is coming from a brand which is LU Tung or LU Teng, I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce that, but that doesn't really make a great deal of difference. Yep, yeah, very uh, minimalist packaging, so that's awesome. You don't really need a lot and cardboard, so it's easy to recycle. Inside the packaging, you get everything that you're going to need. So you're going to get a tiny little cross headed screwdriver. You also get a couple of screws as well to attach the custom backplate, which I'll show you shortly. There's a user manual, which is uh, very simple, basically. If you need to install any drivers, which if you're using kind of Windows 8 or above, then you won't. But if you're using Windows 7, XP, etc., they do include a small CD driver disk, so you can install those, which is all good. It does come with a replacement backplate, so if you're using this in a small form factor PC, which actually do tend to be the kind of PCs which lack in USB ports because of their physical size. So you can install this into a half height slot, so that is included as well. And last of all, we get the actual card itself, which again is absolutely tiny. It only needs a PCI Express times one slot there. Again, no additional power requirements, which is awesome. So that means you don't have to try and find another SATA cable or another Molex cable from your power supply and route it through to install it. It literally is a plug and play device in more ways than one. Now the chipset on this particular one is a VIA chipset, so this is the VT806 I believe it is, dash Q6. I'll put the links for it in the video description also so you can check out the specifications. But effectively you've got two ports on there, maximum 5 gigabits per second, so obviously if you plug in two devices at the same time you're going to get half of that, as is the norm with most of these types of devices. But for me personally it's going to be absolutely great because I can leave my HD60S plugged into this. OBS in theory is going to see it on a completely different chipset and everything is going to be great. At least that's what I'm hoping for. So let's go ahead and install this in the PC and see how easy it is actually to install. So just a quick heads up here. So this is the uh, the back of the case. This is a Techware VXR case and the motherboard, as you can see here, this is the rear IO. The reason why we don't have many USB ports on this is unfortunately because we have Wi-Fi on this board, which generally takes up additional kind of resources and ports. If I move this just to the side a little bit for the LAN cable, you can see there we don't have a lot of USB ports. So we've got two USB 2.0s at the top here. Underneath that, we've got the USB 3.0s, two of those. And then underneath that, we've got another lot of USB 3.0s and there's a type A and a type C. So realistically for type A connectivity for fast devices, we've only actually got three ports. Now with a keyboard and mouse plugged in, capture card, one and two, stream deck, basically that's it, I'm at ports. So if I want to plug anything else, like a USB microphone or something like that, it's just a, a real, real pain. So we're gonna end up adding 
uh, another set of USB somewhere down here towards the bottom, which uh, is going to benefit in a couple of ways. Also, it's going to obviously it's going to be on a different chipset, so it separates my hot devices. So one's going to be directly to the motherboard up here. One's going to be through a separate chipset down here. And also in terms of cabling, it's going to be easier for me to find the cables. Uh, but yeah, that's more for me than it is for you. Anyway, let's get on and install this thing. So just to show you where it goes on the board, so there's our PCI Express expansion slots. Now some of these cards actually require a PCI Express times four times eight slot, which would mean using the one here, which is underneath the graphics card, which is gonna block airflow to our fans. So we wanna avoid that if possible. So we're gonna use our PCI Express times one port, which is this one down here at the bottom, and also shouldn't obstruct any airflow going into our graphics card. So what we need to do first of all is to uh, remove one of our blanking plates. So I'm gonna remove this one here at the bottom, which is in line with the PCI Express slot. So we just do that. Really, you should turn the PC off. I am gonna do that before I insert the card. So there we go, there is our blanking plate removed. So now I can go ahead and turn the computer off. So at this point now, depending obviously on your PC, if you uh, need to have a half height back plate, then you can replace that, but if not, all you need to do is to line up the golden fingers to your PCI Express port and push it till it clicks into place. And that is effectively it. Very, very simple, very straightforward. Now we can replace the screw, retaining screw to hold the PCI Express card in place. Make sure it's nice and tight. And that is effectively it. So now we can go ahead and turn our PC back on. We're using Windows 11 on this particular PC, so we don't even need to install drivers, which is awesome. Okay, so there you go, all done and dusted. I'll be completely honest with you and upfront, when I first installed it and rebooted into Windows, I had some weird USB error message. No idea what that was all about, but I did a quick little bit of research and most people said just restart your computer. So I restarted the computer again and on the second reboot, absolutely fine. Plugged in my HD60S, I've got my overhead cam link going, the cam link 4K, which is on the uh, overhead camera, which you can probably just about see actually over in the corner there on OBS. Everything is working exactly as intended. So for the sake of just slightly over 10 pounds here in the UK, a problem has been resolved where really the only other option would have been to either reduce some of my cameras or possibly get a new motherboard, which uh, sucks. And that is a very long-winded process. Whereas installing a USB card, very, very simple, very straightforward to do. And um, best of all, it is cost effective. And also it will stop me trying to pull my hair out if I actually had any. Anyway, that's gonna wrap this video up. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And if you have, smash the like button. Don't forget if you wanna see more content that's on a daily basis, hit the subscribe button and the chime notification option. Doesn't cost you anything, but means you'll get to see this smiling face in your inbox on a daily basis. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.